Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 23. Get back here. Of Darwell20's Enigmatica Let's Play series. Huzzah! Uh, I am summoning the Wild Hunt once again, uh, because I need some more Weather Skeleton Skulls. Today's episode... I'm going to wrap up occultism for the most part. There's a couple things I want to make for sure. Number one, I definitely want to get like the top tier uh, crusher of things. So right now I'm doing wild hunt. Uh, but what I want is this one. This is going to give me the Marid crusher. Uh, and I need, as you can see, probably very clearly. Oh, boy. It's uh, four weather skeleton skulls. Right. I was not prepared for it. Yeah, I should have had the good food ready. Not today, thank you. Not today, thank you. Oh good, it's nighttime too. I totally planned this well. Luckily it would seem that Wither Skeletons are quite a bit faster at running, which is cool. Um, just putting away a bunch of junk while I go deal with the skeleton. And then I can sleep through the night. Whoo, that was close. Um, but did you see I got a shield? I prepped a shield. Look, I'm like I'm like a pro. I am a Minecraft pro, let me tell you. I got a shield already. I'm gonna invent a mod called Magic Shield. And it's just gonna be it's gonna be a shield that's gonna be nice and invisible. It's not going to take up literally 25% of your screen real estate. And that's all the mod's going to be. Magic shield. Maybe I'll make it look extra cool. Maybe I'll make it look extra cool. I don't know, we'll see. Hey, more Wither Skeleton Skulls. Huzzah! I got quite a few of them, actually, uh, which is nice. What else did I get here? I got Quick Charge 2 and Lava Waxed. What is Lava Waxed? Does that mean like it can't... Gives the Rider of the Straddleboard Fire Resistance. Okay. From Alex's Mobs. That's neat. Um, and then I also got Frostwalker, Reflective Defenses, and Instigating. I got a nice looking bow. What was that? What was that? Unbreaking 4, True Shot 3, Nature's Mend. Neat. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be playing with some seriously OP enchants at some point in the near future. Um, but the main gist was I wanted to make sure to get my Wither Skeleton Skulls, and I think I've done that now, which is cool. Um, sweet. So I've got six total Wither Skeleton Skulls, so that means I can now prep Fatma's Incentivized Attraction so we can summon the Marid. Uh, it's a powerful pentacle allowing to summon Marid and bind them to the summoner's will, and I'll be able to get the Marid Crusher uh, which is the top tier ore crusher, which will apparently give me 4x ore processing, which I'm interested in checking out. Um, so, like, let's let's first off, and it's a big ritual. It's probably the biggest that I've seen or done thus far, uh, just as an FYI. So, fun. Looking forward to checking this out. Let's do it. Uh, so, I'm gonna have the bowls, and let me let me. I'm gonna build this out uh, off camera real quick. So, I will be right back. So I want to check out this unstable sapling real quick. It's an oak sapling from occultism, though. So I feel like that's cool. Uh, my One of my, my white chalk is gone, and I need red chalk anyway. So now that does say the leaves and log are from occultism. So if I equip my goggles, will I observe you as, yes, other world leaves. Sweet. Ish. Do I need to harvest these with like a special resource or something? Well, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. Uh. Uh. Let me try eating this thing again. Now it's working. Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe... Maybe that's like a little bit of a bug? 
I can't tell for sure. But I would think that wearing the Otherworld goggles should allow me to harvest this thing no problem, right? Wouldn't you think? But maybe I do, in fact, need to be doing the unstable Otherworld sapling thing. Okay, getting just a few pieces of wood off camera real quick. All right, so let's get uh, some white chalk because that's what ran out already. <sighs> Hooray! And then let's also get some red chalk. So that's going to be impure white chalk mixed with the Afrit essence we got last episode. And then I assume I just do that. <sighs> Hooray! Yes, red chalk quest completed. Is that going to give me some extra red chalk? Nope, just some lootses. Just some lootses. Alright, I'm going to put away other things that we hopefully don't need at the moment. And I'm going to get back to drawing my thingy. With all the chalks. I don't think I needed purple. Alright, so this should be it. Nice. Alright, cool. So now let's summon our Marid Crusher. Sound like a plan? All right, let's do it. Uh, so for the Marid Crusher, we need copper ore, iron ore, silver ore, and gold ore. No, wait. Diamond block, emerald block, isnium block, and gas tier. So diamond block, emerald block, isnium block, and gas tier. And then activate Book of Binding Maria, Marid bound. And that should be it. Missing a feather. Well, I know a way to solve that problem. I know a way to solve that problem. Shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, and then we have to get orange and whatever that other color dye was. Hooray! Feathers! Okay, so let's try that again. Merit book. You can at least craft those things. So orange dye. What do we have here that could represent orange dye? Uh, Wilden spikes can get me orange dye. Okay, sure, why not? Purple dye? Anything we got here that could do purple dye for me? I'm sure I could... Uh... Oh, apparently we have Gilia from Atmospheric. Sweet. I knew there were going to be things. I knew there were going to be things. All right, so now we're going to be able to get our Married book. Uh, we'll get the Married Crusher. This will apparently 4x ores. So I'm a little excited about that. Uh, and I'm curious to see if I'm going to be able to pick him up with a with a Soul Gem kind of deal. Started summoning Married Crusher. All right, cool. Um, so I don't think he comes with his own capture. Um, you know, like the, the, the other two had their own capture books, right? The Lumberjack and the Janitor had their own capture books. This guy, I don't think will, but we've got the Soul Gem, which will work. Uh, this looks like it's going to be a little bit of a slow one based on how fast it's moving. So we'll be back in a minute or two when it's done. Well, hello, sir. You're pretty cool looking. Now I can pick you up. Yes, excellent. Let's bring you over here, shall I? And let's give this thing a go. Uh, so apparently, if I drop some emerald chunks on the ground, you're going to pick that up. He's very fast. Are you going to process this or no? Can you not do emerald chunks? Do I have to give them to you? Oh my goodness, holy cow. Look at all these emeralds. What is going Wow. Am I crazy or is this like a ridiculous amount of emeralds? I can't even, I can't even with the inventory pack. Like, okay. Was that 4X? I've, I have to, I have to review the footage. I don't, I have no idea how many I gave him, but that feels like more than 4X. Am I crazy? He was fast though. He was fast. 
Uh, let's take, let's take iron. Well, I'm gonna give him a full stack of iron chunks and we're gonna see how much iron he produces. That's not like a plan. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put away some junk I don't need at this moment anymore. I feel like a lot of this stuff I can clean up right now. Cause we're nearing the end-ish of this, of this stuff, but he is pretty quick. I will give him that. I feel like I was getting emeralds faster, but maybe it was just my imagination. But in theory, we should get about four stacks of iron dust right now. Yes, in theory. That's definitely more than our than our uh, create machine makes. I don't know, dudes. This feels like more than four x. We're halfway there now, and we have three stacks. So like, we're gonna wind up with six ish stacks. I feel like. Yeah, we're already past four stacks. It's definitely more than four x, right? And he's very quick too. I like how fast it is. This absolutely feels like more than 4x, thank you very much. And how's your essence decay? Hardly any, which is awesome. So what did we wind up in the end with? One, two, three, four, five, six. That is that is not 4x, that is 6x or processing. That is 6x or processing. That's more than any other mod that I'm familiar with. The biggest one I've ever done is Mechanism, which is 5x. So that's a thing. Now, do you also pick things up off the ground? So if I were to drop some tin chunks on the ground, would you be so kind as to deal with the fact that they're laying there? How do I, how do I get you to pick things up then, sir? You don't seem very interested in picking up items, do you? That's, that's a minor problem, because, oh, there we go. Nope, he did that time. That's cool. Yeah, so that stack of tin turned into six stacks of tin. That is bananas. Well, we're gonna have to process this somehow, right? So I'm just gonna do a basic processing mechanic right now. Uh, my concern was he was not great at picking up those resources off the ground when I dropped them. Um, so we'll figure that out. So I think the next thing I want to check out is this dimensional storage component of this mod, which seems to me like basically a refined storage system-ish. I don't know if it's as powerful as refined storage, but it might be up there. So let me flip through the book for a minute, understand it, and then we'll be back and check it out. All right, so I think the first thing I need to make is a dimensional crystal matrix. So I need an ender pearl and three quartz blocks in this ritual. So, three of you, an ender pearl. And a book of binding, Ginny. Yes. Unknown ritual. Uh, Striker's higher binding, is something off on you? Do, am I missing? I'm uh, missing some, some, some candles. Isn't that literally the ritual I said? I guarantee I'll forget I took these candles away. It's all right. This is what we get for, you know, doing this thing. There we go. Cool. So that will bind the gin into a dimensional matrix. Uh, cool. I'm going to let this dude process these diamond chunks I have. Oh yes, six at a time for sure. Diamonds for days. Also, this ritual's almost done making the matrix, I think. Hey, there we go. Woot. All right, dimensional crystal matrix needs to be added to a storage actuator base, which is a other stone pedestal. Which needs some of these and this. Uh, and this thing's going to go over here. As you can see, I was prepping in advance. Perfect. 
Uh, and the other stone pedestal makes the other stone, the storage actuator base needs three gold and a foliot. So three gold and a foliot book. Looks like I have one ready. Sweet. I think this is how it works. And then I combine the storage actuator base that I'm making now with a dimensional crystal matrix to get the dimensional storage actuator, which is this guy. And then stable wormholes are connected to storage controllers and allow remote access for both players and spirits. Okay. So we may want to try that out. And then storage accessors are similar to stable wormhole, but allow mobile access to the storage for players. So I think this is like your wireless connector kind of deal. Um, so we're going to want both of those, storage accessor and stable wormhole. Stable wormhole and storage accessor. Okay. So this is our storage actuator base. I'm just gonna kind of place it in the world and, and figure it out. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. No, I combine you with the matrix. Dimensional storage actuator. Hey, quest complete, nice. Dimensional storage actuator. Uh, is your gateway into storing items in another world? It starts off rather small, but your storage can be expanded by adding up to six stabilizers, one on each side, pointing at the actuator. Tier one dimensional storage stabilizer is a reward that we get, and then some other goodies from the mod. Cool. Um, and then on account of completing that quest, I got a tier one, which gives me two more tier ones and a bunch of experience. Uh, dimensional storage stabilizers stabilize your actuator's connection with the other world. The more stable your connection is, the more you're able to store. Up to six stabilizers can be added to any one actuator. Each tier will increase the stability, allowing you to store more and more items in the other world. They need to be placed facing the matrix portion of your actuator and can be up to five blocks away. One stabilizer can be placed in each direction in the cardinal directions as well as above and below. So basically, yeah, that makes sense. But then there's a tier two, three, and four version of them uh, that can hold a ton of items. So that's how things get really big. Uh, so stable wormhole and storage accessors are the next major things to get. So can I, oh, hello. That's cool. So I think the stable wormhole is like a way to remotely access this. So like we can access it here. It looks like it has a nice little crafting grid. So I can like put items in it. Nice. One out of 128. Cool. Now let me get like a bunch of stuff and see how this maps out. Oh, and look, it has a nice little... Oh, that's nifty. I like the little animation up there. So boom, boom, boom. So I guess it's, okay, that's neat. I don't know what this does yet, uh, but search, sort by amount, sort ascending, do not sync with JEI search. Interesting. So it's kind of like a refined storage or applied energistic system is definitely what I'm seeing here, right? So something like that, yeah. Very nice. I don't know what this slot is about yet. I don't know what that means, but everything else looks cool. And then I assume I can do something like this. Okay, not bad. Sweet. I'm just playing at this point. Very cool. Um, and now clearly I have refined storage. You know I'm a big refined storage nerd. I like this mod. Um, so I'm not planning to use this as my new storage system going forward. I just want to see what it's like and also let you guys see what it's like. So I'm guessing this means it can store 128 types of items, um, which is cool. And then when we put the stabilizers on here, now it said something about making sure that they were facing the dude. Though I think I saw in the book that I need to be facing it, but one block above. Three eighty four. Okay, cool. So now I can store three. Okay, neat. So if I were to put it here, it looks like you have to add an item before it updates, right? So that shouldn't work. But then we put one here, and this will work. And then once we add some items to it, it'll bump it up. So that's the tier one upgrade. Okay. And that's a pretty significant upgrade if you think about it. Um, 
Oh good, it's even rendering the the durability and everything. That's cool. Um, so that's a pretty significant upgrade for just tier one. And you can have up to six tier fours. So I imagine it can store a pretty ridiculous amount of items when you upgrade it all the way. All right, so if I want a stable wormhole, allows access to the mental matrix from a remote destination. Um, that will be wormhole frame, ender pearl, and two nether quartz. Wormhole frames, by the way, are just some gold and some other stones, so not a big deal there. Nether quartz times two. Excuse me, ender pearl. Don't make me right click ender pearls on things, because clearly, clearly that is harder than it looks. Uh, and then the foliot book. Which should be easy peasy to make. Unknown ritual. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Duh. It's this one. And before I throw the ender pearl again. There we go. Wormhole frame. Nice. All right. Sleeping through the night and back in a minute. All right. So we've got the stable wormhole, which I assume there's a way to link it. I'm guessing it's something like this or this. Linked stable wormhole to this storage actuator. And then I can do something like this. Oh, it's got the Starfield animation. I like that. And look, it's the same thing. Hooray, 896 slots. So if I put my potato in there, and potato. Yeah, I did a bad job with lining this up. It's all temporary. I'm just playing with it. Don't yell at me. Right? It's the it's basically remote access to the thing. That's cool. Sweet. Now let's get the remote access actuator. So that's going to need Strigor's higher binding, which is, I want to say, this one. I think that's it. Yes, ish, maybe. We'll see. Um, so Strigor's higher binding, we want storage accessor, inert storage remote module, two ender pearls and another quartz. Using up all my ender pearls. And then we need the inert storage accessor, which is going to be, oh my goodness. Are we like low on other world? So what I can do to get some more of that is andesite in here. Okay, and that would be you. Perfect. And then Book of Binding Jin. Remember, we have to wait just a moment for the cactus to smell. That's why that book takes a little longer than the other book. Why is that a task completed? I've made like dozens of those already. Um, oh, I got an extra stable wormhole. Or maybe multiple stable wormholes, I don't know. It's cool though. Uh, and let's cook this thing off. All right, so you're gonna start cooking. Uh, yeah, why did I get that quest completion doohickey? All right, I have no idea. I have no idea. Anyway, back when this is done crafting. All right, got uh, this thingy. So I'm assuming same deal, shift right click, linked storage remote to actuator. Awesome, cool. Uh, so then, you know, put things in here, storage remote actuator, get things out, perfect. I like, I like, very cool. It's pretty much what you would expect. Um, I don't think we have to do too much with this. I think that's pretty good. I just wanted to kind of see how it works and I do like it, it's very nice. Uh, machine operators are apparently spirits that can automate crafting, which is kind of cool. Um, and then otherwise it would just be making more storage stabilizers of higher tiers. Um, tier 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, the, the fourth tier being uh, a pretty big ritual to make. Um, I don't know how much they'll add if we, I mean, I, at some point I might figure it out. But for now I don't think we need to spend too much more time on this, right? Like, it's cool, but 
One thing I didn't test, by the way, is what happens if I put a baked potato in here and then break this and then move it? And still got the baked potato. Okay, cool. So this dimensional storage actuator must have like a unique identifier on it uh, that regardless of where you put the base block, it still links to the same inventory. Cool. So one other thing I'd like to take a look at is one of these familiars. Uh, so we have to sacrifice a parrot in order for this to happen, but I think there's a way to summon a parrot. But this familiar, I think, is like we basically will be able to bind this creature to an item that we can equip, and then it gives us abilities is the gist of what I get it. So there's a wild parrot ritual. Um, so that's going to be Hedron's Lore, which is a bunch of gold. Do we have that one drawn yet? That might be this one. Looks like this one, right? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. Uh, let me let me get ready to do this. Uh, we also have to sleep through the night, clearly. Um, so yeah, let me get the parrot and try this out real quick. All right, summoning wild parrot. And then I also killed the tier one crusher that we had inside this soul gem. This is my tier four crusher, the Marid. This was my foliot. I released him and killed him so that I would have, you know, room. His, his time was almost up anyway, and... What do we need a tier one when we have a tier four for, right? So this will summon a parrot that we can use to make this Drick wing. Oh, and I didn't realize, but this actually requires sacrificing a chicken. So I need to go get a chicken real quick. Uh, shouldn't be a big deal, obviously. We've got chickens. Cool. Uh, and because I noticed the gray particle effects, I'm like, why isn't this? Oh, right, it's gray. Okay. That means things. <coughs> Sorry, chicken. I needed more feathers anyway, so kind of good timing. Now we're cooking. Cooking, cooking, cooking up a parrot. All right, I think my parrot summoning has completed. That's not a parrot. You're not a parrot. Explain. That is, that is very much not a parrot. What is this? This is not a parrot. What? What? In this ritual, a foliot is summoned as a familiar. The slaughter of a chicken and the offering of dyes are intended to entice the foliot to take the shape of a parrot. As foliot are not among the smarter spirits, they sometimes misunderstand the instructions. What? What? All right, let's try this once more. Foliot book. And then you need me to kill a chicken. Maybe this counts. <laughs> Apparently it counts. So that's 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 a win. Okay, at least at least we can do that. That's cool. Parrot this time, please. Okay. And no, no such luck. We're gonna have to try again. All right, fifth time's the charm. Maybe we'll find out. Hey, parrot! Woot! Finally! Finally! All right, now for this bad boy, which is Ofix's calling. This is where we're going to summon our Drickwing Familia, and it requires the sacrifice of a parrot. All right, I think I need a cobweb. The book says spider web, but I assume that means cobweb. And I think I can make that courtesy of the fact that I already have the tan and running. Hey, infused mana string. Sweet. Hopefully this equals cobweb. There's nothing else called spider web. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's cool? Oh, hello, zombified pigman. Boom. And summoning Drickwing Familiar. Sweet. Now we need to kill our captured parrot. Sorry, parrot. <coughs> And now we're good. Here we go. Sweet. Summon a Drickwing familiar. Awesome. So when he's nearby, I get jump boost six, multi jump five, and slow falling. That's kind of cool. Look at that. Oh, that is neat. Now I think I can put him into a trinket. If I'm not mistaken. I think. So, enterprising summoners have found a way to bind familiars into jewelry that passively apply their buff, the familiar ring. 
uh, consists of a soul gem mounted on a ring that contains a jinn. Uh, the jinn in the ring allows a familiar captured in the soul gem to apply effects of the wearer. To use a familiar ring, simply capture a summoned and tamed familiar, and then wear the ring as a curio to make use of the effects of the familiar. Um, when released from the ring, the spirit will recognize the person releasing as a new master. Um, so in order to make this, it's Strigor's Heiner Binding, uh, Book of Binding with Jin. So Strigor's Heiner Binding is this one. Let's see, where's that one? Is that, is that you? That might be you. Yes. Cool. Well, I finally did it. I accidentally vein mined underneath the sacrificial bowl and hit the dirt underneath. Like, see, look, this is hitting the dirt. This is not hitting the dirt. It's a little bit rough. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the Striker's Higher Binding to bind the Familiar Ring. Um, right? Yes, Familiar Ring. Sweet. So we need a Soul Gem, two Gold Ingots, and two Silver Ingots, and a Gin Book. Uh, we're going to need some of you. This might be the last time I do this, so it's all good. Gin book. Gold and silver, two of each. And then a soul gem that I presume is empty, right? Uh, so gold, silver. You guys can go away now. And then an empty one of these. Then you combine into this. And then that should be cool. And then the ring that we're gonna get is gonna work just like the soul gem and we can capture the bird and then we can equip the bird as a curio and then get these buffs without him being an entity in the world, which seems a lot safer to me. Cool. So back in a minute when the crafting's done. You don't go anywhere, Mr. Bird. You make me a little nervous with the whole I'm chilling here thing. Oh, I can make you sit. Even better. Even better, I can make him sit. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So what we should have now... Uh, Waiting, waiting, waiting. Crafting complete. Euler. There we go. So this ring, I presume, I can do that with. So, oh, yep. So same deal, right? Exactly like the soul gem, you can pick up and place down your dude. And then, nice. Now in theory, I should be able to equip this in a curio slot for rings. Excellent. And now it's affected. So see on the top left? That is cool. Wow. Like multi-jump. I can jump like six times and jump really high. That's kind of neat. I like that. I'm not sure. I don't. What I don't like is that it's showing me the buffs all the time. That's like one of my pet peeves. If the buff, if the buff is applied to you 100% of the time, I don't want to see it on my screen. Uh, and also saturation too occasionally. I think that's from one of the foods I was eating was giving me saturation. And like, you know how buffs in Minecraft sometimes get stuck? I think that's a vanilla bug. I might be wrong. So I like it, but I don't like that the buffs are on my screen all the time. <laughs> Rip. Aroni. Anyway, I think that's a good wrapping up point. So let's call that the completion of occultism. There's a few things we haven't checked out, but I think that's a pretty cool mod. There, It is cool. And you know what else I think? I think that there's more to see from this in the future. There's obvious rituals that only have like one or two features to them. So my, my I don't know what the roadmap for the mod is, but my guess is that there's probably more cool stuff coming. So I think that's really cool. And the best thing we got, by the way, was a creature that gives us 6x ore processing. So like, eh, yeah, that is cool. That is cool. I'm going to clean up all these rituals. Um because I don't think we need them to stick around. And if, if at some point in the future I want to remake some rituals, I've got plenty of chalk to re replace it down. So for now, wrapping up point, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time and start doing some other stuff with other mods. For now, take it easy.